To perform this job, you will need to first safely raise and support your Mini. Please follow the link provided at the end of this video for additional assistance with that task. Shown here is a new clutch master and slave cylinder for the Mini Cooper S. It is recommended that you replace both at the same time, as replacing just one tends to increase wear on the other, causing it to fail. Remove the splash shield under the front of the engine and locate the clutch slave cylinder. It is mounted on the front of the transmission. Use a flathead screwdriver to push the clutch hydraulic line retaining clip back. Carefully remove the clutch hydraulic line from the slave cylinder. Place a drain pan under the line as all of the brake fluid drains out of the hydraulic circuit. Installing the new slave cylinder is a bit tricky. In order to bleed the system, you will need to fully compress the slave cylinder. BMW specifies a special tool for this job. However, I was able to construct a tool using two ARM GM steering pullers and some extra long nuts and bolts from a local hardware store. Unscrew the cap for the brake fluid reservoir and disconnect the plug going to the brake fluid level sensor. You'll want to use either a turkey baster or a syringe to remove just enough brake fluid so that the level is just below the green line drawn on the brake fluid reservoir in this image. This leaves enough fluid in the system so that the air does not enter the brake lines but prevents fluid from leaking out once you remove the clutch master cylinder. Remove the driver's side lower bolster panel by prying it off along the top edge and carefully remove it. Disconnect the switch to the auxiliary driving lights if they are installed on your car. This image shows the various connections that hold the clutch master cylinder in place. The two 10mm bolts carrying the master cylinder in place, green arrows, the clutch safety switch, red arrow, the pressure line to the slave cylinder, purple arrow, and the plastic pivot bolt that mechanically connects the master cylinder to the clutch pedal, yellow arrow. Remove the plastic pivot bolt by pressing the two ears together on the left hand side of the clutch pedal arm as shown in the green arrows, then press it out in the direction shown by the yellow arrow. Shown here is the plastic pivot bolt coming out the other side of the clutch pedal arm, green arrow. This bolt can be a bit difficult to remove as there isn't a lot of room to work with. Once the bolt starts to emerge from the other side, grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it all the way out. Next, remove the clutch safety switch from the side of the master cylinder. Remove the two 10mm bolts securing the master cylinder to the car. Keep in mind the bolts in this picture have nuts attached to the rear that will spin freely once loose, so you will need to reach up and manually remove them. Here's a shot of the clutch master cylinder viewed from the other side. You can see the nuts on the back of each mounting bolt, green arrows, Remove the nuts from the bolts and set both aside. With both bolts removed, maneuver the master cylinder down from under the dash. The black plastic clutch feed line is longer than it appears. Most of it is on the other side of the firewall near the brake fluid reservoir. You can gently pull this extra length of line through the firewall to help lower the cylinder down and out. Place a towel under the clutch master cylinder to catch any brake fluid still in the system. Remove the clutch feed line by simply pulling it off of the cylinder. Be sure to check the o-ring on the inlet and make sure it's in good shape. Then press back the retaining clip on the pressure line going to the slave cylinder and pull out the line. Also, if you haven't already, transfer the 90 degree fitting from the old cylinder to the new cylinder, green arrow. You may find it helpful to have a helper pull the feed line back out through the firewall while you place the clutch master cylinder back up in underneath the dash. With the clutch master cylinder reinstalled, attach a power bleeder to the brake reservoir and pressurize the system. It's important not to exceed one bar or 14 pounds per square inch as this can damage the seals and the clutch hydraulics while bleeding. With the steering wheel puller still compressing the slave cylinder, attach a hose to the bleeder valve. Open the bleeder screw and let the system bleed until there is no more air bubbles coming out. It's also important to keep an eye on the reservoir level. If the level drops below the clutch feed line, you'll have to start bleeding all over again. 
may also need to have a helper quickly push down and pull back on the clutch pedal to remove all the air from the circuit. Just remember not to push the clutch pedal without the slave cylinder compressed or not installed on the transmission. You risk blowing the seals on the cylinder. Now remove the steering wheel puller from the clutch slave cylinder. As you remove the puller, the piston will move outward, which will also draw more fluid into the cylinder. Check the reservoir level and add fluid as needed. The end of the clutch cylinder piston has a domed end which fits into the throwout arm coming out of the transmission. Carefully fit the slave cylinder into the mounting bracket on the transmission and make sure the dome end fits into the dish end on the arm. Once in place, thread the mounting bowls back in and torque to spec. Shown here is the clutch slave cylinder on the R50 Cooper models with a 5-speed transmission. The procedure for bleeding the cylinder is the same as on the Cooper S. The difference here is that the slave cylinder is mounted on the top of the transmission. Once you have access to the cylinder, remove the two 10mm mounting bolts holding it in place, green arrows, and disconnect the fluid lines. Here is the same steering wheel puller rigged up to compress the slave cylinder on the R50 Mini Cooper. This image illustrates the clutch slave cylinder on the later R55, R56, and R57 models. The procedure for changing the cylinder is the same as the R50, 52, and 53 cars. The only difference being that the bleeder valve on the cylinder is a plastic valve that is much easier to open and close. Green arrow. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.